presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Karras. I'm not, by any manner of means, the hero of this story, nor the villain, which is just as well since it concerned with one of the great traitors of our time. But I was around when it happened, and for a bit after it was over. Long enough, anyway, to vouch for the truth of it. It all happened in a beautiful resort on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. It had to do with our own country, and in a pretty vital way, too. Stick around, I'll tell you about it. of 700,000 hard-earned francs isn't your Uncle Harry's idea of a good time. But that's what happened. That's what comes from trying to keep up with the Greek syndicate and the ex-king of a certain important country in the Near East. The Greeks and the king were too much for me. I was cleaned out. So I say I went out on the terrace for a breather, and there she was. Tall, red-haired, green-eyed, and alone. Oh, my luck must be changing. Excuse me. You're speaking to me? Well, there's nobody else around. That's what I mean about my luck. There's just the two of us. What do you mean by luck? I passed your table half hour ago in the casino and you didn't seem to be doing too badly. Well, that was before the Greeks got into the game. How am I doing now? Greeks are still in the game, aren't they? Well, I came here with the Greeks. Well, that doesn't say you're going to leave with them. You always were a fast worker, Harry. See, so you haven't changed. Hey, wait a minute. What's wrong? Don't you remember your old chums, Harry? Ned, not a Palaine. I'm glad you haven't forgotten. Forgotten? How could I ever forget? But what I remember is a blonde, a beautiful blonde, almost as beautiful as you, almost as beautiful All as right, you, darling, as a blonde. Forgiven. Well, I didn't ask to be forgiven. Now, listen, that if, if you change the color of your hair as fast as you change your boyfriend's, there's bound to be a little confusion. <laughs> Can't blame me if I treated you like a stranger. Well, you were doing all right. <laughs> uh, shall we uh, pick up where we left off? Yeah, just now or in 46, uh, in beer, it's I think it's all right. What would you be doing now if you hadn't recognized me? I would have been kissing you. Oh, look what you think. <laughs> look, honey, I've got a speedboat down at the dock. It's waiting to take me to my yacht. Want to come for a little spin? Your yacht? Well, not exactly mine. It's, uh, but I'm very much in residence, if that's the right expression. Whose is it? Enrico de Sars. Oh, yeah, the karaoke. Um, I've been in residence myself. Yes, I dare say. But uh, just now, Enrico's off to Paris, and I've got the run of the boat. Oh, it's very enticing, darling, but I uh, mustn't forget the gentleman who brought The Greeks? Yeah. They might come bearing gifts. What have they got that I haven't got? There's no answer that I know. I know, money. Never, boy. How'd you guess? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait? What else is there for me to do? No, seriously, Harry. There's something I want to talk to you about. Well... You're probably the only man I could tell this. Okay, honey, okay. What's worrying you? Well, I know I sound like a crook in a comic book. It's got something to do with the security of our country, Harry. With atom bombs and things like that. Is this on the level? Yeah. Yes, you aren't kidding. I can see that. Well, come on. Let's go somewhere where we can talk. Yeah, but where? What are you grinning about? I'm <laughs> just going to say. Yeah? Well, there's always the yacht. Oh, you're hopeless. All right, come on, let's go.
That's the karaoke up ahead. In five minutes, we'll be there. What's going to happen with the Greeks? No, I don't care. You don't care? Why? Is that my fatal charm or the atom bomb? You'll stop joking, darling, when you hear what i got to say. Well, why don't you start? All right, I will. You know somebody called, uh, Fodor? Fodor? Oh, well, yes, he's... He's the one of that big villa on the cap, the Hungarian, about 70 years old, bald, gray eyes, amateur oceanologist. He's a big aquarium. He used to be an investment bank or something like that. They seldom goes out. Is that the one? That's the one. What's wrong with Mr. Fodor? Is he some kind of international spy? Well, I'm staying in his villa as a housekeeper. Oh, and what about the Greeks? The Greeks just took me to dinner. Oh. Dr. Fodor has a cold. Doctor? I didn't know he was a doctor. Well, it's just a title. Lots of middle Europeans are doctors. It doesn't mean they practice medicine. Okay, and so you're his house guest. Well, isn't that nice for you, Netta? And Dr. Fodor is what is technically described as loaded. Now, what's on the agenda? Marriage? Oh, don't be silly. He's too old. Well, nobody with more than 20 million bucks in his stocking is ever too old. Well, if you put it that way, I agree with you. As a matter of fact, I think he's planning to adopt me. Now, you stop laughing, Harry. It's true. <laughs> Taking a shot at me and the whole thing's more or less on the, uh... Up and up. More or less. Well, yeah, of course, more or less. <laughs> but, um, I'm playing it straight. He's lonely, you know. Mm. His own daughter was killed in a train wreck ten years ago, and, well, I've sort of taken a place. Perfect. Can't say anything wrong with that. Don't tell me after all the capers you pulled in your time that that's what you've got in your conscience. We weren't talking about my conscience. Well, you that brought it up. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Well, here we are. <laughs> century, and the whole thing from a strictly romantic point of view was completely wasted. Yes, believe it or not, when we got up on the deck, she wouldn't even take a drink when I tried to kiss her. No, Harry, please. I honestly and truly want your advice. This isn't a gag or a racket. It's something serious. Okay, honey. Okay, go ahead. Well, first of all, I'm not the only house guest at the Villa Giulia. Villa, Villa Giulia, you mean, yes. Yeah, of course. That's the name of Florida's place. Yes, up on the cap. Well... For the last three weeks, there's only been two of us. In, a, in the guest house, I mean. Yeah. Me and this uh, scientist, uh, Hans Conrecht. Conrecht? Yeah. You with your fine cabinet mind. Don't tell me you never heard Hans of him. Hans Conrecht? Are you sure? He's a physicist. He's supposed to be one of the most important men in his field. Yes, that's how I read in the papers. I also read that he's on his way to America. Well, that's hmm? just it. Hmm? He's leaving the day after tomorrow. Well? And they've given him a big job on some very top secret kind of project like the... Uh, the H-bomber. Well, honey, we've already got the H-bomber. Something must be the word. All right, something. Okay. I don't know what it is, and you don't either. Oh. He's going to go to America to take part in it. If Conrad is going to America on a job as important as this, you can be sure that he's been checked by every kind of security agency. You see, I'm jumping ahead of your story. I'm guessing you think this scientist chum of yours is some kind of spy. I'll say that. But look at the other people. Leaders in their field who've, who've already betrayed Yeah, them. that's true. You uh, see... The trouble is, there's no way to tell them what's in these people's minds. Their backgrounds can be perfectly clear, nothing to prove, but all the time they can be thinking, not in terms of our side, but of the other. I know all that, kid. Get to the facts. What's on your mind? You think... You think Fodor's in it, too? Oh, no, of course not. He He's really a sweet guy. Sure, I'm in it for what I can get out of him, but still, I like him. He's no communist. Well, there's dough he doesn't need to be on. doesn't have anything to do with it. You know that as well as I sure, do. Sure, go on, honey. Go on, go on. Go well, on. Dr. Fodor has a telescope. Not just an ordinary telescope, but a high-powered one. Uh, <laughs> up on the roof of the villa. There's all kinds of gadgets like that. Yes. You know, in many ways, he's just like a little kid. Hmm. Well, anyway, one day last week, I was taking a sun bath, and I happened to look through that telescope. Well? Well, this convict, yeah. he's a funny kind of guy, Harry. He keeps to himself. He's very quiet, very polite. Here, have a little champagne. Won't stop the h bomb. Thanks. Mostly, as I say, he keeps to himself. And almost every morning, he goes out fishing in a little boat. So when you looked through the telescope, you saw him in his boat. And here's looking at you, honey. And uh, what was he doing? Fishing. For what? Fish. Honey, is that what we're being so hush-hush about? Lots of folks go out little boats and fish for fish. Yeah, but there was another little boat. And it came up to Connick's boat. I could see them just as plain as if they was next to me. There was a man in the other boat in a dark suit, and he gave Connick a comic book, and then he rode away. Thrilling. Will Connick read the comic book, or will he return it unopened? Will you please stop kidding, Harry? This is serious. Well, let me tell you about the other man. 
I saw him plainly so I could recognize him later when two nights afterwards he was standing in front of a kiosk buying a newspaper. I happened to be walking by with one of the Greeks. Mm, they're very clever boys, those Greeks. They recognized him. One of the boys did anyway. And that man who gave Conrad the comic book is a communist agent. He was well known in Greece just at the end of the war. His father was a Greek, his mother was a Russian, his name is Polyog, and he got out of Greece just in time. There was a price on his head, Harry. He's one of the big agents from Moscow. This isn't gossip or hearsay, it's the truth. And here, wait a minute, when I get my bag open, here it is. This is the comic book. Hmm. Oh, is this a comic book? There's nothing comic about that paleog. You should hear the Greeks on the subject. Can you trust them? On that, yeah. Okay, honey, you've convinced me. I'm signing on. Tomorrow, you take me over to the Villa Julia and introduce me to Dr. Folder, and then... He's my pigeon. Leave him alone. If you want me to help on Lafayette Conrick, that's the only way. Don't worry, I won't try to persuade Folder to adopt me. I just want to get next to Conrick, and then we'll see. Well, you haven't got much time. Remember, he's leaving day after tomorrow for yes, America. I remember. Well, all I can do is try. Finish off the champagne, honey. Why? Because it's good champagne. I'd hate to see it stand there and get warm. There's nothing we can do tonight. Now, raise your head. You said that before. I'm under your tricks, Mr. Long. Yeah, it's good, honey. It'll save us a lot of time. Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. <laughs> decided another story at least deserved looking into. Yeah, who is it? What it matters who is. He's knocking on door, so you open. Well, I'm certainly not open the door. I know who it is. This is Pavel Ivanovich Dorsky, vice commissar of keyholes. Oh, stop you kidding. Who is it? Oh, it's you. Well, don't sound so let down about it. Would you rather have the commissar? I can go and rent myself some whiskers. Might not be a bad idea at that. Come on in. Come on in. Mr. Porter wouldn't like it if he knew I had gentlemen visitors. What's the idea of a comedy accent? Comedy? Well, I hope your friend the professor doesn't laugh at it. It's the only Russian accent I've got. You mean you're going to try to use it on comic? But that won't work. He doesn't even know That's me. That's just yet. it. He doesn't know me. That's my only hope. So he buys you as a Russian and a communist agent? I guess that's your plan, but then what? What do you accomplish? Well, that, honey, is something I couldn't tell you, but at least we'll be further along than we are now. I know. You're just doing it to test me, to see if there's any truth. Can you blame me? The whole thing would be just in your mind, after all. Well, if that's all you think of what I've told you, if you're only treating it as a joke... Honey, if you know of a better detective, hire him. You won't hurt my feelings. Oh, Harry. Now, you're the one that's getting sore. I know what. What? Let's kiss and make up. Oh, Harry... Harry, what? Nothing. You forgive him. Come on. Let's make up again. Nedda told me that both of the boats, Conrick's and the other that went out to meet him, had flown a striped jersey as a sort of flag on the masthead. Well, obviously, that was the agreed-upon identification, so I got myself a striped jersey of my own, charted myself a little sailboat, and started cruising up and down in front of the Villa Julia, and hoping... Oh, yes, I forgot to mention the comic book. Nether had comped the professors out of his room, so I went and got two more comic books just like it. And I tore my two comic books in exactly the same way. And then when Nether put one of these back in the professor's room, of course, now he had a comic book, the torn place of which would match my comic book and nobody else's. Well, 
The jersey on the mast finally worked and out came Conrad in his own boat flying his own jersey. He looked fairly startled when he saw me. Not that he knew me as Harry Lyme, because he didn't know Harry Lyme. But I was somebody new in the striped jersey and torn comic book line. And the professor, for all his brilliance in his own field, was a little slow thinking in the spy department. But well, where is the other? The other what? Uh, that was me, of course, in my best Russian accent. You speak of my colleague, the one that's been meeting you here in the water before? Yes, I don't know his name, of course. Ivan, but... Ivan is traitor. What? You heard me, he's a traitor. You know what that means? But certainly. You mean he has betrayed the revolution? Was he in the pay of the Americans? Yes. If he tries to communicate with you again, you must refuse to see him or to talk. This is orders. Well, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? I only unmasked your pretty little professor, that's all. I only proved... Proved? That... You mean you got proof? What? Well, if you got proof, there's nothing more to worry about. We just take the proof. Yeah, yeah, proof. What's wrong? I forgot. You forgot what? That proving something to my satisfaction isn't the same Harry, as... Harry. Yeah? Why don't you go to the American ambassador? With what? I mean, if you got the professor to talk, and you know... Well, look, honey, I'm a crook. All the world knows that. How, how am I going to even get into well, the Well, for embassy? one thing, he isn't there. The ambassador's here. He's spending the weekend at the Carlton Plaza. You can get into the Carlton Plaza, Harry. You've been in every room already. Now, don't exaggerate. Well, isn't it the truth? In a general sort of way, yes. You mean just break in and beard the old buzzer? Why not? Why not, indeed? Uh, what time is it? It's early. Why? Well, early is definitely too early for breaking in on an ambassador. Let's go to the casino. So you can lose some more of your money? Don't be ridiculous, child. I can lose some more of your money. <laughs> Come on. About two hours later, I climbed up the side of the hotel, let myself into the ambassador's room. All right, all right, there. I'm awake. That's good, Mr. Ambassador. Now hold, hold up your hand. I apologize for coming in through the window. You heard me. Hold up your hand. But why, Mr. Ambassador? What do you mean, why? Hands up. Well, Mr. Ambassador, excuse me for mentioning it, but you don't have any gun. Oh. You see, when people ask people to hold up their hands... How do you know I don't have a gun? Because I can see. Oh. Well, the explanation's quite simple, Mr. Well, Ambassador. Well, I've been crawling up from one balcony to another in the darkness, so, so my eyes are accustomed All right, to... all right. What are you after? My money, it's in my pants pocket. Take it and go away. I'm sleeping. I don't want your money, Mr. Ambassador. Just a minute of your oh, time. Oh, that's worse. Everybody wants a minute of my time. Now they've taken the breaking into my bedroom to get it. From now on, I'll have to sleep with an undersecretary under my pillow. Mr. Ambassador... Please make it quick. I know you're armed and I'm not, but in common decency, if you had the remotest idea what my schedule is. You like, know of you a certain be... Professor Conrict. What about him? Well, he's leaving for America day after tomorrow to take charge of... I know, I point. know, I know. What about Conrict? The communist. Everybody says everybody's a communist. Got any proof? Sir, I can prove it. Good. How? Well, I talked to him this afternoon. And? He admitted he was working for the Kremlin. That... Got any witnesses? Wait, no witnesses? Got a tape recording? Oh, no, this happened out in the water. On the water? Yes, in a couple of boats. I pretended to be a Russian agent. With no just... witnesses? Well, no, Mr. Ambassador, but I, I can assure you... Oh, you can, can you? By the way, who are you? Well, it doesn't matter who well, I am. Of course but... it matters who you are. You're making a very serious accusation. Hey, where are you going? Away, Mr. Ambassador. That's where I'm going. Away. I've certainly understood that I'm making a fool of myself. Now, hold on a minute. Excuse me, Mr. Ambassador, but why? Because maybe you've got something. Of course I've got something, Mr. Ambassador, but what, if you'll excuse my impertinence, what in the blue blazes can I do about it? Uh, good night now, sir. And pleasant dream. <laughs> I've been to see my ambassador, honey. He's mine, too. Well, you can keep him. You mean he didn't believe you? No, I can't say I blame him, but uh, anyway, he told me to go ahead and see what I could do. Sort of indicated that nobody'd stop me. He said, <laughs> nice of it, wasn't it? Very. And Conrick leaves for America tomorrow night. You got less than 24 hours to do it in. Do what? Pass a miracle? See, the whole trouble is I'm... I'm... Well, I'm who I am. It's just my word, that's all. My word is all I've got to offer, and that isn't worth a Confederate nickel with a hole in it in the black market. Where are you going? Down to the boat dock. You mean you got another meeting with... Yeah, at high noon. Got to see a man about a bomb. You are Mr. Harry. 
Paddy Lime. Yes? We have a friend in common. Huh? Through this friend, I have come into possession of some very startling information. Oh? Do I need to explain myself any further? Oh, yes, old man. Just a little bit further. What's the information? Who's the mutual friend and who are you? The friend is Nedder. The information, Mr. Lime, has to do with treachery. Treachery of the most terrible sort. I am Dr. Fodor. Oh, I see. Do you mean... I mean, Ned has been talking to you about... She is a delightful child, Al Ned, but if she has a She doesn't know how to keep her trap shut. Well, Mr. Lyme, you see, she trusts me. She began to feel that there was nothing effective that you could accomplish, so she turned to me. And spilled a whole pot of beans. Okay, what happens now? Professor's your friend. Just where do you stand, Dr. Fodor, and all this? I stand, Mr. Lyme. With the free world. Well, that's a very nice little speech, Doctor, but what does it mean? But I have known Hans Conrad since he was a child. His father and I were friends in the university. He has been almost like a son to me. Fine, fine, but you're still not answering my question. I will endeavor to, Mr. Lyme, if you will just give me... There isn't much time, you know. Your old chum, the professor, is leaving for America. No, Mr. Lyme, I... I do not think he is leaving for America. But it's all set up. He's taking charge of that new project. No, Mr. Lyme, Professor Conrad has changed his plans. You still aren't telling me anything. What does that mean? He has resigned his post, or what amount of that he is not leaving my house. But how can you be sure? How can you speak for him? I was like his father. Certainly, I I loved him like a son. Yes, I... And I think he loved me. And now? I cannot trust you, Mr. Lyme, but of course not. After all this, I will never trust a human being again. I don't blame you, Dr. Fodor, but I, I don't see why you shouldn't tell me what's happened. Well, I suppose I'd better tell you something. Yes, when the police come, I'll have to say something to them, but the truth is I don't have anything more to say. I've, I've said everything to Hansel. He was like my own boy, Mr. Lyme, my own boy, and now... Now he is dead. Dead? You mean... I killed him, Mr. Lyme. I am his executor. Dr. Fodor took me into his house and showed me Conrad. He was in the laboratory and just saw Fodor's aquarium. His blood showed almost black on the white tiles of the floor. I told him I would hand him into the police, but I gave him time alone. I knew he would choose to go like this. He took one of the knives, as you can see. One of the knives we use here for our research on the fish, a sharp knife. He slashed his wrists. I came in and found him like this. He was not yet quite dead. And then he died. And I went away and I left him here. So what is there to say now? A prayer? He didn't even want prayers. I was away at the casino and just now I got back in the bar. Yes, me. what did the butler tell you? Something, something awful had happened. The happen. butler hasn't told you half of it, Ned. At least I hope he hasn't. Anyway, there's one less traitor in the world. Are you the one that did it, Harry? To the professor, right? Oh, well, not exactly, but you might say I was around at the time. I know. What do we do? What do we do, honey? What does anybody do nowadays? We just go on the way we're going and hope. Hope for what? Well, the Conricks of the world are in the minority, for one thing. There's just a few of them and lots of the rest of us. What do you mean by the rest of well, us? I'm not too sure. I can't say it, kid. I'm sorry. It just won't come out in words that don't sound like wilted oratory on a late afternoon on the 4th of July. When I get corny, real corny, I know about it in advance. And now I feel it coming on, so I figure we'd better get out of here and go down to the casino. Hmm? But I've just come from there. Well, you'll go back eventually, honey. Why not now? Come on. I feel lucky. <laughs> Harry Lyme returns in just a moment.
Harry Lyme. Last week, I ran into Netta again. A blonde again. Just as hard to overlook as ever. Hi, Netta. Harry, what are you doing in London? That's what Scotland Yard keeps asking me. I don't know. Browsing, honey. Browsing. Remember last summer? Will I ever forget? By the way, what happened to your old gentleman? What was his name? Uh, the one who was going to adopt you? He did. He adopted you, Dad? You mm. wonderful creature, you. You must be worth a fortune. What are you doing for dinner? You're buying it for me. I've got a better idea. You buy it for me. Oh, I would, Harry, but I'm broke. But your guardian, he's, he's worth the coin. Not cool. anymore, Harry. He's dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. He was a nice old guardian. What happened to that 40 or 50 million potatoes? You left the whole thing to a foundation. Well, what's that? Come on. I know a nice, cheap little place where we can eat Dutch treat, honey. Dutch treat, that is, and you find another guy. 